The 747 is unquestionably an icon of the aviation industry. Affectionately known as the Queen of the Skies, its form is universally recognized among travelers, thanks in large part to that odd-looking hump it's got. But if you look around the rest of the aviation industry, you'll notice that no other plane has got one. So what is that hump doing there anyway? Let me explain. If you've ever had the opportunity to fly business class on a 747, you might have been lucky enough to sit on the 747's upper deck. Smaller, quieter, and secluded from the commoners flying in economy, this mini cabin creates an exclusive and intimate environment for premier travelers. But the hump wasn't put there for passengers. Originally, it was designed with cargo in mind. From the early to the mid 20th century, Progress in the aviation industry was moving at an absolutely blistering pace. We went from first flight to landing a man on the moon in just 66 years. So when Pan American World Airways, also known as Pan Am, came to the Boeing company in the 60s requesting a clean sheet aircraft design that could carry double what their current flagship 707s could, Boeing executives were hesitant. With how fast the industry was evolving, there was speculation that, by the time the jet finished development and entered into service, the necessary technology to mass-produce supersonic aircraft like Concorde would be mature. Once this happened, the 747 would become obsolete, too big and too slow to cater to the needs of airlines and passengers. Wanting to appease Pan Am while also guarding against obsolescence, Joe Sutter, the chief engineer of the 747 program, decided to build a jet that would also appeal to the air cargo industry. He managed to do this by placing the cockpit of the 747 above the fuselage, rather than at the very front of the jet like most other planes. Ultimately, this would enable strategic modification to fit air cargo needs. Essentially, the nose of the airplane could swing open, and cargo could be loaded nose first. This would allow for greater cargo utilization of the 747's fuselage, in addition to the loading of oddly shaped and oversized items. Once supersonic aircraft surpassed the capabilities of the 747, all of these jets would be repurposed for a life-carrying freight. When Joe Sutter brought this design proposal to Pan Am, he suggested that, while the plane was still being used to ferry passengers, the additional space created by the hump could be used as a crew rest area. Pan Am executives had a completely different idea. They put a piano bar up there. This idea was an instant hit with the first passengers who flew on the 747 in the 1970s, and it helped create an aura of prestige about the jet. Soon thereafter, when the fuel crisis of 1973 hit, the piano bars were replaced by business class seats to help generate greater revenue. Over time, new iterations of the jet extended the hump to accommodate more business travelers. However, Boeing never extended the hump all the way back to make a true double-decker, like the Airbus A380. Boeing engineers had discovered an interesting design quirk. So long as the hump ended in front of the leading edge of the wing, fuel economy and aircraft stability stayed relatively consistent. Push it back any further, and well, they did not. So, the 747 kept its beloved hump. Unfortunately, as many of you probably know, the 747 is going extinct. Boeing has just a handful of 747s remaining in its backlog, all of which are for the freighter variant. Additionally, airlines are rapidly phasing out 747s in favor of more fuel-efficient wide-body twin jets, like the Boeing 777 and Airbus A350. So, if you have the opportunity to fly on one of these iconic birds, take it, because the Queen of the Skies won't be around for much longer. If you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And, until I see you again, don't forget to look up. Oh, you're still here. Well, since you decided to stick around, I might as well point out one caveat. The 747 technically isn't the only plane with a hump. This is the Carver ATL-98, 
another cargo jet that has a hump. It was designed in the 60s, only 21 of them were built, 8 of those crashed, and it was much smaller than the 747. Needless to say, it was not nearly as successful as the 747 program. Now I know there are going to be people in the comments section who didn't end up making it this far in the video and will end up complaining that I didn't mention the Carver. So why not help me out and tell them that they really should have watched the video all the way through. Thanks for the help. Okay. See ya.